The story kicked off with sorcerer Yuji getting ambushed by a monster in the woods. Quick on his feet, Yuji called in his trusty slimes for backup, and together they wiped out the threat. Next, we found ourselves in an adventurer's guild where a guy got teased by his pals for claiming he saw a slime that could sling fire spells. Everyone thought slimes were wimpy and couldn't do magic. But then, lo and behold, Yuji strolled into the guild. He nailed a tough mission, leaving the receptionist stunned. But when Guildmaster Aegis got wind of it, he was skeptical. How could Yuji, just a regular tamer, pull off such feats? Aegis bought up all the herbs Yuji collected anyway. Suddenly, an adventurer burst in reporting trouble in the forest. Turns out, big bad monsters were on the move. Yuji's slimes clued him in that these monsters were headed for town. Aegis told everyone a massive swarm of thousands of monsters was headed our way, and he wanted to evacuate. But the adventurers weren't having it. They were dead set on defending their turf. Then, out of the blue, Yuji proposed a plan to wipe out the monsters. He revealed a dragon fang he had and suggested he could mimic a dragon's fire breath to toast the beasts. The others weren't convinced Yuji could pull it off solo, but one adventurer pointed to Yuji's slime crew and vouched for him. So they geared up to hold off the monsters while Yuji prepped his dragon act. During a big fight, Yuji's strong wolf gathered up his scattered slimes in the forest, getting ready for battle. Other adventurers armed themselves with bombs as monsters showed up. Yuji used a powerful attack, starting a fight. He planned a big move in 15 minutes using his magic skills. While the fight got more intense, Team Dryad saw a suspicious person leaving a red crystal. Yuji took advantage of this, using the crystal to teleport his slime team and catch the sneaky person. He transferred his magic to the slimes and sealed the crystal. But the enemy drank poison, making the slimes start casting fiery spells. Despite the chaos, the adventurers fought back against the monsters. Yuji told his wolf to do a special task while sending slimes to help the adventurers. With the town safe for now, Yuji told Riri to bring back the adventurers while the slimes got ready to defend again. But a tough monster threatened, so two adventurers offered to sacrifice themselves. Yuji's wolf saved them just in time and defeated the monster. Yuji used a big attack, putting up a barrier and then using his hellfire skill, destroying most of the monsters. Even though his magic was running low, Yuji launched another attack, getting rid of the rest of the monsters and winning the fight. Exhausted but victorious, Yuji collapsed. When he woke up in the evening, he found his slimes and Riri relieved that he was okay. Meanwhile, Guildmaster Aegis figured out the cause of the monster attack and returned to the city. As the celebrations ensued, Riri asked Yuji why he risked his life to save everyone. Sensing he didn't want to talk about it, she left with a smile. That's when Yuji reflected on his past life as an office worker. Later that night, as the party wound down, Riri checked on Yuji, only to find him gone. He and his slimes were already planning their next move, heading to the next town at dawn to avoid drawing too much attention as heroes. By morning, news spread that the hero Yuji had left town under the cover of night. Meanwhile, Riri stumbled upon an item from an evil organization, prompting the guild master to send a report to the central guild. As Yuji and his slimes scoped out the next town, the adventure continued. Yuji rolled into Kilia, a new town with his squad of trusty familiars. While scoping out the place, his slimes started craving some meat for lunch. With Yuji drawing stairs due to his slime and tourage, they stumbled upon a meat vendor. Yuji went all out, buying up all the meat to satisfy his familiar's hunger. Suddenly, a bell rang, signaling the arrival of a big shot from the central guild. But after lunch, it was quest time. Yuji, often underestimated because he's a tamer, caught the receptionist's eye for the tough quests. As he looked for a job, a group of adventurers approached him. They wanted him in their party, but one guy, Lotus, doubted Yuji's usefulness as a tamer against monsters. But Lisa and Tina saw potential in Yuji's monster tracking skills and insisted he join. So off they went on a quest to find an earth dragon, with everyone thinking Yuji was weak. He ended up tasked with tracking monsters, not fighting. When Yuji sensed some enemies nearby, he held back his slimes to gauge the party's strength. Then he warned them about the incoming monsters. Lotus, eager for action, charged in and took down all the monsters with his dagger skills, earning praise from his party. Meanwhile, the slimes were itching for a fight against the weaker monsters. Moving on, they took a break in the evening, sharing dinner. Yuji even shared his chicken drumstick with his adorable slime, earning cheers from the familiars. Taina was curious about Yuji's monster tracking skills, sparking more questions about his abilities. Just as things were getting intense, Lotus stepped in, suggesting they hit the hay and keep watch for bandits. Yuji was surprised by Lotus's kindness and consideration, seeing a different side to him. While asleep, Yuji had pondered the ominous prophecy from the bandit and the cult, the Blue Moon of Salvation. Despite their efforts, the group found nothing in their search for the Earth Dragon. Encouraged by the girls, Yuji had felt pressure to solve the case with his slimes. Memories of his adventurer exam had resurfaced, prompting him to suppress his powers using a magic limiter skill. Surprisingly, Yun weak spells had proved effective against monsters. However, the sky had turned purple, a blue moon had appeared, and stormy clouds had gathered. A bright light had obliterated the forest, revealing a colossal blue dragon wreaking havoc. 
Yuji hadn't wasted any time, ordering his slimes to evacuate while alerting the girls about the danger nearby. Aina had taken charge, leading a group to a supposed safe zone called Delight Canyon, known for its protective winds. Uncertain of its safety, Yuji had sent his proud wolf and crew to scout ahead. Inside the canyon, they had encountered monsters but had managed to defeat them with shared skills. However, they had faced a fierce wind and upon investigation, had discovered its source hidden among the rocks. As they had fled from a giant red bear, the slimes had bravely taken it down, securing their escape. Just as they had relayed the news to Yuji, the ground had cracked and the earth dragon had emerged. While the girls had hidden, Yuji had decided to face the dragon head on. But his weak magic had had no effect on its tough scales. When the dragon had counterattacked, hurling rocks at the girls, Yuji had intervened, saving them with a rock bullet attack. As round two had commenced, Yuji had noticed something peculiar as the dragon had charged at him. Dodging its attack, he had commanded his slimes to bombard it with rock bullets. Though ineffective, it had served as a distraction. Then, using Hellfire, Yuji had blasted the dragon into oblivion. The girls had emerged to find only its bones remaining, impressed by Yuji's prowess. Curious, Tina had asked Yuji how he had pulled it off, suggesting he might have used flammable ores beneath the rocks to defeat the Earth Dragon. Returning to the guild, they had reported their victory, earning skepticism until Yuji's slime bag had spat out the dragon's skull as proof. As the trio had reveled in their newfound wealth, they had caught the attention of the guild boss, a stern man with a single eye dubbed Captain Eyepatch. He had insisted on speaking with Yuji alone and had arranged a conference with key figures in the city to discuss how to deal with the Blue Dragon. Yuji, weary of such meetings, had sarcastically remarked that it could have been handled via email, earning a chuckle from those familiar with office humor. Captain Eyepatch had asked Yuji to describe the dragon, prompting him to sketch it from memory using his skill. The detailed drawing had shocked the attendees, particularly the priests who had produced a holy book containing a depiction and tale of the same dragon. Legend had told of a dragon that once ravaged the continent, growing exponentially and wreaking havoc in just three days before being vanquished by a divine emissary. Captain Eyepatch had doubted finding such a hero now, but had remembered his solar eclipse 30 years ago when the ceremony had attempted to summon his savior from the future. The priests had revealed the summoning date had passed, unaware of Yuji's arrival in their world then. They had speculated the dragon's appearance was a side effect of the failed ceremony. As the sky had darkened once more and Yuji's slimes had reported the dragon growing larger, panic had ensued. Undeterred, Captain Eyepatch had insisted they must attack at dawn. Taina and Lisa had joined the dragon hunt, trusting Yuji to protect them for the bonus. As they had left, the priests, led by style, had presented Yuji with the dagger, believing he could wield it well as a gift from God. As might have fallen, Yuji had contemplated the battle and the potential loss of lives while the sky had turned purple again, indicating the dragon's ominous growth. Yuji had flashed back to his epic magic evaluation, wondering if he had what it took to take down the blue dragon. Without skipping a beat, he had rolled out with his slimes and trusty wolf to face the beast head on. He had told one slime to go on the offensive while he geared up for a fiery attack called Hellfire Decimation, aiming straight at the dragon. But instead of backing down, the dragon had gotten even angrier, firing off energy beams left and right. Yuji had thrown up a barrier spell just in time to shield himself from the onslaught. As the dragon had showed down on magic to bulk up, Yuji's slimes had started asking about his game plan. With his back against the wall, Yuji had busted out the dagger of Kethis, deciding to get up close and personal for a killer move. He had dodged the dragon's attacks, using barriers to get in close and even using a slime-made barrier to stop its rampage. Scaling up to the dragon's level, Yuji had deflected another attack with a slime-fueled fireball. Benny, the brave little dude, had charged in, jabbing the dragon's eye before delivering the final blow with Hellfire of Demise through the dagger. Thinking they had taken the dragon down for good, Yuji had gotten a rude awakening, and the dragon had whacked him into the cliffs with its tail. Badly hurt and mad as heck, the dragon had geared up for round two, but Yuji had been running low on both magic and health. With his barriers crumbling, he had planned to bust out a divine spell, only to find out there was a cooldown on divine strike. Thinking fast, Yuji had zapped the dragon with a lightning attack, then leaped onto his wolf to deliver the finishing blow with Hellfire, sending the dragon packing in a blaze of glory. Back home, Yuji had been clueless about the funky residual energy left behind. The next morning, Captain Eyepatch had filled him in on the dragon's defeat, suggesting he call for backup next time. Over lunch, Tina and Lisa had bemoaned missing out on the action and the bonus. Yuji had had plans to hit up another town, but he had made sure his slime stuck with the girls. On the road, Dryad had hit him up, revealing some gnarly mushrooms from the battle site with some serious power. She had offered to whip up some sick potions, and Yuji's slime had eagerly gone out to gather them up. Dryad had begun crafting blue potions using the mushrooms, but had required pure water to complete them. Yuji had taught her how to distill water, reminiscing about their first encounter when he had saved her from a cursed magic stone. He had dispelled the curse and destroyed the monsters it spawned with Hellfire, earning Dryad's gratitude. She had aided him by providing rare medicinal flowers, cementing their alliance. 
Dryad had explained the potion's color, attributing it to Dragon's grace and neutral but potentially destructive power present in the mushrooms and stone. With the distillation complete, Dryad had finished the potions, expressing happiness and gratitude before returning home. Yujai had received the potions in bitter farewell, moving on to the next scene. Navigating through thick fog, Yuji and his group had encountered human scents leading them to a hidden village in the forest. The villagers had smiled suspiciously as the chief had invited them to stay the night due to the danger of traveling late. Yuji had declined but had agreed to join them for dinner, though he had found himself uninterested in the offered food. The chief had questioned Yuji about his arrival, and he had explained being waylaid by the fog on his way to the next town. Sensing unease, Yuji had departed after learning the village was called Messias, feeling something unsettling about the place as he had continued his journey. As Yuji strolled into town, he was hit with a bizarre sight. It was suddenly winter instead of summer. Battling the chill, he threw up an isolation barrier skill to stay toasty. Chatting with a guard at the gate, he learned that this wild weather switch up had happened 10 days ago and caused some serious trouble, even leading to a few deaths. Despite being tempted by the promise of tasty grub, the streets seemed deserted. Finally reaching what was supposed to be the town's top spot for Chao, Yuji found out they were out of firewood thanks to the icy blast. Determined to lend a hand, he headed to the nearby woods and quickly chopped up some logs with his trusty battle axe. Calling in his slimes, Yuji sucked out the moisture from the logs, making them perfect for the chef's grill. With the slimes doing their magic, Yuji earned some serious chef cred as he whipped up the best darn steak he had ever had. But turns out, this steak was just the warm-up act. The chef spilled the beans that their real signature dishes were on ice because of the firewood shortage. Yuji was on a mission now for the ultimate grub. He swung by the guild where the quests were all about firewood, and the receptionist pointed him to the firewood collection boss, Vodka, hanging out at the eastern gate. Looks like it was time for some wood gathering action. So Vodka, this guy that was all about chopping trees because he couldn't stand those tree-hugging environmental types, spilled the beans on the town's wood problem. He talked about Messi's village and how it had become a ghost town because of all this mess. Yuji, with his focus on woodcutting, blew Vodka and the woodcutters away with how darn efficient he was, especially with his slime squad backing him up. Back at the guild, Yuji caught wind of this legendary monster tamer who rocked it with slimes as helpers. That got him thinking, so he decided to dig deeper into the geats. After snagging wood from the nearby forests and making Vodka a happy camper, though not without chewing through the resources, Yuji chilled out with some stew at the restaurant. There, he heard about some herb farms getting harassed by monsters. So Yuji sent his slimes out on a divide and conquer mission, some to guard, others to hunt down the troublemakers. And let me tell you, they ran into this massive boar that looked like it was straight out of dinosaur times. But with their fireball magic, Yuji and his slimes put those monsters in their place and stumbled upon this funky crystal sucking up magic juice. Yuji had a hunch it was the dragon's doing, causing the cold weather. So he absorbed its power, confirming Dryad's gut feeling. Dryad discerned the crystal's artificial nature due to its release of human magic. Yuji purified it with Dispel, transforming it into a rock. Benny directed other slimes to search for similar crystals, discovering an abundance in the area arranged in a perfect circle. Using a map, Yuji located the circle's center, sensing something hidden. He prepared to destroy the area, explaining to Dryad the necessity to prevent the magic's ecological harm. Yuji unleashed Hellfire, creating a crater revealing a hidden entrance. Determined to eradicate the source of the cold, he ventured inside, motivated by the town's enticing cuisine. Yuji burst into action, kicking down the door to reveal a deep pit leading to an underground dungeon. He told Dryad and the proud wolf to hang back while he sent his slimes to snoop around. They stumbled upon a high-tech lab nearby, blowing Yuji's mind with its fancy gear. His eyes zoomed in on these red magic stones being whipped up in the lab. Just when he was about to go stealth mode to find this scientist du Javier, his sneaky slimes ratted him out, but Yuji wasn't one to give up easily. He sent them back in to gather more intel while he headed back to the forest. His slimes hit him up with a hot tip. They had spotted two lab workers. Yuji told them to sneak into a room and they found this heavy-duty iron door needing two levers to pop open. With Yuji's guidance, they cracked the code and climbed a ladder, popping out in the village of Messias. There, they caught these two dudes blabbing to Javier, who was posing as the village big shot but was actually part of this Blue Moon of Salvation cult. Turns out, they were using the deserted village as their base to crank out these magic stones. Yuji found out his previous smackdown messed up their machines, putting a halt to their stone-making shenanigans. Worried about what these cultists were planning next, he rallied the troops to snag some cursed ore crystals from the forest with orders to silence any witnesses. Yuji then set up a slime barricade around the village, keeping his distance to avoid any more chaos. But even after scouring the village, they came up empty on non-cult members. So Yuji's slimes stumbled upon a library instead. He told them to grab all the intel they could find. Yuji got wind that the terrorists caught wind of his slimes, but he wasn't backing down from the plan. Some slimes hit him up about a sealed door with no levers, but Yuji had a hunch. He positioned his slime by these candle circuits, snuffed them out, and bingo. 
The door cracked open, revealing a treasure stash guarded by a creepy old skeleton. Returning cultists found the room ransacked, alarming their leader, Xavier, who suspected a powerful adversary. He deduced their attacker's awareness of the cleansing flame, a nuclear reactor set to activate upon their demise. Despite Yuji's gratitude for the revelation, Javier resolved to eliminate the threat, prompting cult members to sacrifice themselves, triggering the reactor's collapse and causing tremors. Yuji encapsulated his slimes before the eruption, enclosing the village in barriers. However, as the land split and dark flames emerged, overpowering the barriers, Yuji initiated his contingency plan, contemplating his next move. Faced with the overwhelming power of the cleansing flame, Yuji concocted a new spell, the Total Isolation Array, to contain it within a perfect cube. Despite draining his mana and causing his HP to plummet, Yuji managed to withstand the onslaught, emerging relatively unscathed as the cleansing flame dissipated. Returning to town, Yuji learned of the chaos he missed and the eventual return to normalcy thanks to the snow melting. Grateful for his efforts, the townsfolk celebrated with a town warming party honoring Yuji for his contributions. Indulging in the chef's exquisite stew, Yuji experienced blissful satisfaction before collapsing in contentment. Upon awakening, Yuji decided to examine the stolen documents from Mezias, only to find them blank due to anti-piracy magic. However, one document remained, listing individuals targeted by the Blue Moon cult, with Yuji's name shockingly at the bottom. He realized a group of assassins, including a woman in revealing armor and masked man, were after him. The woman vowed to torment him once she confirmed his threat level, prompting Yuji to prepare for a deadly encounter. As they chatted, the masked assassin clocked Yuji, strolling through the woods with his hawk-like vision. Yuji bounced from Gourmet Town once he caught wind of the cult's hired guns tailing him. Following the guild receptionist's tip, he hightailed it to a town famous for monster armor, aiming to level up himself and his slime squad. Catching wind of their own tail, Yuji had already spied on the assassins with a sneaky slime. While Yuji snoozed like a baby, the assassins kept watch. The masked dude was itching to pounce, but the redhead chick counseled caution. So they decided to play the waiting game, observing Yuji for the day. Yuji clocked their cult vibes but kept his cool, sticking to his plan and heading to the next town to hit up a renowned blacksmith. The assassins watched as Yuji scoped out prices, seeming kind of ummed out. Then he bumped into someone and put on a show of being broke at a fruit stand, disappointing the hit squad. Even though masked man thought Yuji was a dud, redhead remained intrigued. Yuji took on a gig to hunt some low-level monsters, unleashing his proud wolf on three beefy bulls. At first, the wolf was shaking in its boots, but with the slimes cheering him on, he found his inner strength. Yuji reminisced about taming the wolf after it tried to take a chunk out of him, and now seeing his power, the wolf wiped out the rest of the monsters with ease. Concerned that the assassins were undervaluing him, Yuji kept the fight going by healing the monsters repeatedly, impressing the hit squad with his tactics. But when the proud wolf insisted on soloing the beasts, Yuji reluctantly let him, showing his faith. As the proud wolf triumphed, the assassins figured Yuji and his gang were nothing special. But when a bull charged at Yuji, he whipped out a sword and took it down, showing his true colors. Realizing the danger posed by the assassins, Yuji ordered his slime to ice them, putting them on ice. Eavesdropping on their chat, Yuji got the scoop that they were gunning for priest style next, and he decided they were too hot to handle. Freezing them solid, Yuji pondered the cult's beef with priest style and their leader's knowledge of him. The next day, he came back to the armor shop loaded with cash, ready to deck out his slimes. Initially brushed off by the worker, Yuji impressed the boss, Geigel, who clocked the strength of Yuji's monsters and offered his help. But he didn't have armor up to snuff for such powerhouse critters just yet. Geigel broke it down for Yuji, explaining that crafting armor for the slimes and the proud wolf from scratch ain't no walk in the park due to the lack of materials. The key ingredient? The Lesser Fire Dragon Jewel, nabbed by taking down a blue Lesser Fire Dragon, was the best bet. But even that might not be enough to contain the slime's raw power. Geigel spilled the beans that the volcano housed tons of Lesser Fire Dragons, with a chance of bumping into a blue one. He suggested Yuji focus on the smaller dragons first since they were easier to handle. Despite the odds, Yuji was all in, planning to use his water magic skills to put them down. Scooping up quests related to fire dragons at the Adventurer's Guild left the receptionist's jaw on the floor, warning Yuji about the dragon's magic resistance. Unfazed, Yuji set off for the volcano, where he had to brave a river teeming with flesh-eating pyrones. To navigate the waters, Yuji recruited a red slime adapted to fire who assured him of the volcano's safety. With his slime squad's help, Yuji scoped out the river and stumbled upon a gnarly pit teeming with pyrones. After a showdown with the Mega Piranha, Yuji busted out a combo of ice and fire magic to take it down. Pressing forward, Yuji and the gang approached the volcano, now with a posse of fire slimes in tow. But they didn't clock the dragons until Yuji pointed them out. The slimes, terrified, recalled their mom's tales about the fearsome fire dragons. 
With the slimes too scared to join, Yuji faced off against the dragon solo, testing the waters with his water magic and taking down a lesser dragon like a boss. Buoyed by Yuji's win, the slimes got their act together and joined the fray, blasting water cannons to take down the rest. But then they faced a bigger, badder blue dragon, resistant to water and ice magic. No sweat for Yuji though, he pulled all his slime power to unleash a mega freezing spell, icing the dragon and snagging its jewel. After wrapping up the day with a dragon killing spree, Yuji returned to Geigel with loot in hand. Geigel was gobsmacked by the hall and whipped up armor and a collar, giving them a magical boost. Yuji tested their new gear while in Geigel with their speed and strength, but Geigel warned against using spells stronger than what Yuji showed off as it could wreck the armor. Yuji toyed with the idea of snagging a regular fire dragon jewel, but Geigel waved it off saying nobody could take down the dragons living in the magma pool. As Yuji mulled over the situation, his slimes alerted him to some sketchy activity at the volcano, prompting him to send his pets to check it out. Yuji's heart skipped a beat as he spotted two figures scaling the volcano, and a deafening boom shook the earth, signaling the eruption. Darting outside, he spotted the massive fire dragon reigning supreme, letting out ear-piercing roars. Relieved to see his crew intact, Yuji told them to stay sharp while he kept tabs on the dew creeping up the volcano, barrels and tow. Eavesdropping like a pro with a stealthy slime, Yuji learned the plan. These guys aimed to douse the dragon with water barrels, thinking it'd be its downfall. But Yuji smelled something fishy and summoned a magical Mithras slime to crash their party. Despite their fancy moves, the hunters dodged the slime's attack, so Yuji sixed another slime to box them in. Caught red-handed, the hunters realized they had messed with the wrong dude and tried to off themselves with poison. Yuji sniffed around the barrels, finding curse water inside. Alarmed, he summoned the Dryad who confirmed it would send the dragon into a rage. Quick on his feet, Yuji purified the water, nipping one threat in the bud. With the Dryad gone, Yuji ordered his slime to stay sharp. They discovered jittery lesser fire dragons and the inn manager urged Yuji to skedaddle before the rain hit. As folks cleared out and the rain came down, the fire dragon grew more ticked off by the second. Yuji remembered the manager's warning about the dragon's rainy day wrath and geared up to stop it. With the dragon stomping toward town, Yuji sides up the situation. Its heat evaporated the rivers and turned the ground to lava, but when it stepped into the river, it hurt like heck. Yuji knew traditional tactics wouldn't cut it. When it reached the second river, Yuji prepped for showdown. Despite his best shots, his spells bounced off the dragon's thick hide. Knowing a head-on fight would be suicide, Yuji opted to stall by taking down the barrier. With the barrier down, Yuji signaled the proud wolf to scram as the dragon crossed the river. Though his slimes feared for the town's safety, Yuji assured them they'd done their part. Now with the barrier gone, Yuji prepped for the next phase. The barrier acted like a dam, unleashing a tidal wave of water that knocked the dragon off its feet. Yuji then set up the barrier as a backup plan, gathering water for the attack while the slime held off the dragon. Initially written off as toast, the dragon rallied, almost torching them. Yuji shielded his pals with a last-ditch barrier and told them to split as the dragon geared up for its grand finale. Realizing it was now or never, Yuji unleashed his ace in the hole, the permafrost curse, juiced up by his gear and the slime's mojo. The magic met the dragon's fire head-on initially neck and neck before Yuji's power slammed the dragon, freezing it and its stomping grounds solid. As the ice melted away, only the dragon's jewel lay in the snow. Totally spent from the showdown, Yuji stumbled upon another curious find amidst the wreckage. Later, he cut up Jigal on the sly about the rare jewel, who promised to whip up something legendary with it. Curious about Wardarian, Yuji grilled the guild receptionist, uncovering its shady rep. Checking out the second item, pegged as a guild artifact with shady origins, Yuji sniffed a link to Wardarian. Days later, Geigel dished up the legendary-grade gear for Yuji's slime, bidding him adieu with mutual respect. Bouncing from town without blowing his cover, Yuji left Geigel to his craft. Yuji's arrival in Ordaria was met with frosty glares, just as the receptionist warned from the last town. He played it cool, pretending to browse the guild's quests, but decided to sit this one out, clocking two dudes barging into the joint, talking about him. Using his slime as a mole, Yuji found out they were Blue Moon cult cronies, gabbing about axing him off their hit list. The brass wanted him gone, but Mustachio advised playing it cool to avoid blowing their cover. They whine about botching up the fire dragon git and plan to snitch to their boss, Walter. Yuji mulled this over as Priest Style and his sidekick swooped in, whisking him off to the church for safety. Priest Style spilled the beans about the Blue Moon cult's grip on the guild and how they were safe within the church's four walls. He spilled about Walter's power grab, turning a righteous gig into a cult of terror. Feeling responsible for the mess, Style came clean to Yuji, spilling about his divine vision to guide a hero in reclaiming grace and sorting things out. As Yuji mulled over the divine deets in his bunk, he wondered if Style was nudging him into some legendary gig. Remembering the receptionist Pearl's hint about a legendary tamer, he planned to grill the priest the next day. But when he found the priest missing, Yuji sent his slime squad to snoop around. 
Meanwhile, Style and his wingman faced off against a sketchy barrier, which Style blasted with Divine Mojo, leading them straight to the Blue Moon Cult's HQ. Tracking their trail, Yuji rolled up to a cave blocked by a similar barrier. Zapping it away, he stepped in to find the baddies laid out cold. Right before Yuji's grand entrance, Style and his buddy went toe-to-toe -to -toe with armed goons, with Style showing off his combat chops by dropping them like hot potatoes. Gearing up for the final showdown, he busted into the boss room, flexing his skills as he took down their henchmen. But when the heat turned up with Walter, his sidekick double-crossed him, snaring and killing Style. Turns out, Style's sidekick was a Blue Moon cult turncoat all along, stringing Style along to possibly trap the hero Yuji. Style had been holding back some key deets about the Divine Visions, and his past tussles with the cult made things worse. Walter gloated about their master plan, juiced up by their god and a fresh method to tap into his powers. Spewing villainous talk, Style offered to take one for the team if it meant Yuji would swoop in and save the day. Taking up Style's challenge, Walter unleashed a nasty curse, turning his goons into mindless ghoul monsters. Watching this cruelty unfold, Style was shook by Walter's twisted moves. As the showdown reached its peak, Yuji barged into the room, having laid waste to all all the ghoul monsters on his way. He made a beeline for Style, busting him out of those magical shackles before exchanging some heated words with Johan, the double-crossing lackey. With Style's intro, Walter, the big bad, stepped up, itching for a showdown with Yuji, while his cyberpunk gizmo did its thing in the background. As Walter's ghouls came charging in, Yuji wasted no time blasting them back with fireballs, slung by his trusty slimes. Seeing his chance, Walter booked it deeper into his fortress, finally reaching his throne room. There, he underwent a crazy transformation, morphing into a monstrous ghoul king after juicing himself up with the dragon's grace. In the epic showdown that followed, Walter's newfound mojo proved to be a tough nut to crack as he knocked Yuji around like a pinball with one devastating punch. But Yuji ain't one to back down. He clocked that Walter's transformation wasn't complete, leaving him with some chinks in the armor. When Walter took it a step further, morphing into a ghoul dragon, Yuji knew he had to switch up his strategy to match his opponent's speed and strength. With some slick moves and teamwork with his furry and slimy companions, Yuji launched a relentless assault against Walter. But even with their souped-up gear, Walter was one tough cookie to crack. That's when Yuji pulled out the big guns, special armor for his pets. With their newfound powers, Yuji and his geared-up crew geared up for the final showdown against the monstrous ghoul dragon. The proud wolf dashed through the fray, taking swipes at Walter with lightning speed. Timing their attack just right, the slime decked out an armor leak, setting Yuji up for a massive fireball that sent Walter crashing to the ground. Walter looked beat, but he had one last trick up his sleeve, absorbing the energy of his fallen cronies to regenerate himself. Unfazed, Yuji kept the fireballs coming, momentarily taking out Walter's arm. But the dude bounced back quick, coming back even stronger and faster with each energy boost. Seeing the writing on the wall, Yuji hatched a plan. He led Walter on a wild goose chase, hitting him with all kinds of distractions. As Walter burned through his energy trying to heal up, Yuji pulled out the Cursed Disciple spell, turning Walter's healing limbs into stone. Walter was shook but kept coming, unleashing a relentless barrage of blows. Just as Yuji's barriers started to crack, his slime signaled they were ready for the next phase. Working together, they trapped Walter in a magical net, turning him into a sitting duck. With surgical precision, Yuji unleashed the Hellfire of Decimation, reducing Walter to a charred husk. But even in his final moment, episode 11 to 12, as the showdown reached its peak, he barged into the room, having laced to all the ghoul monsters on his way. He made a beeline for style, busting him out of those magical before exchanging some heated words with Johan, the double crossing lackey. With style's intro, Walter, the big bad up, itching for a showdown with Yuji while his cyberpunk gizmo did its thing in the background. As Walter's been charging in, Yuji wasted no time blending back with fireballs, slung by his trusty slimes. Seeing his chance, Walter booked her into his fortress, finally reaching his throne room. There in a crazy transformation, morphing into a monstrous ghoul king after juicing himself up with the dragon's grace. In the epic showdown that followed, Walter's newfound mojo proved to be a tough rack as he knocked Yuji around like a pinball with one dead punch. But Yuji ain't one to back down. He clocked that Walter's transformation wasn't complete, leaving him with some chinks in the air. When Walter took it further, morphing into a ghoul dragon, Yuji knew he had to skip his strategy to match his opponents, but the sage bounced back, unleashing a hellfire of his own, matching Yuji's power blow for blow. Despite the epic clash, Yuji managed to hold his own for a while, but he knew he couldn't keep it up much longer. Meanwhile, the sage put his grand plan into motion, spreading the dragon's grace across the continent through artificial rain. Chaos erupted as monsters went berserk in every town. Even though Yuji was in the fight of his life, he couldn't just sit back and watch. As the sage kept up the pressure, Yuji had an epiphany. He didn't have to go it alone. Inspired by the resilience of the townsfolk he met, Yuji gave his allies a boost, empowering them to defend their homes. Embracing the power of teamwork, Yuji geared up to face whatever came his way. But just as things were heating up, Style dropped a bombshell about some divine judgment from a ticked-off god. 
Realizing he couldn't wait around, Yujit shoved a mana potion and threw down with the corrupted sage in a battle for the ages. Despite the sage's overwhelming power, Yuji kept him on his toes with a flurry of divine strikes, stunning his opponent. Sensing the moment for a knockout blow, Yuji let loose with a divine strike powered by the dagger of Kethis as the sky darkened with a solar eclipse, fulfilling the prophecy. With the corrupted sage on the ropes, Yuji tapped into the power of the fire dragon jewel gear, setting up a powerful isolation array. He plunged the charged dagger into the sage's heart, releasing the stored divine strike energy and reducing the sage to ashes. The explosion cleared the skies continent wide, leaving Yuji standing tall. As the golden light bathed him, Yuji descended, embodying the emissary of the gods. Style and all collapsed but stayed conscious, content that the world was safe. Yuji, aware of the Blue Moon cult's stronghold in Ordarian, didn't stick around to celebrate. After making sure the towns were safe, he found everyone cheering over their victory. But even though they'd taken down the reanimated sage, Yuji knew the Blue Moon cult's real depths remained uncharted. In a secret meeting, the cult's bigwigs discussed their final weapon, the purifier capable of laying waste to everything in its path. Their goal, to take down the Black Dragon of Ruin, no matter the cost. Hearing this through his slime, Yuji's mood darkened. Facing even more threats, he encountered a pack of tigers, wiping them out with ease. The next day, he swung by the guild and casually mentioned taking down a tiger all by himself. The receptionist, moved by his apparent trauma, tried to comfort him. But the guild boss saw through the act, recognizing Yuji as the legendary hero known for single-handedly taking down monsters and saving cities. That's all for today. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit that like button. If you enjoyed the video, you might also like this one here.